Good Wednesday, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us tonight, both for our Shabbat on Wednesday program and the Q&A about the Yom Norayim and our high holiday plans. It is with this dual purpose that I would like to direct my remarks tonight. Let's lay the matter to rest. I don't want to leave this hanging any longer. It's time to bury that issue. What these figures of speech have in common is that they all in some way reflect the reality and the values articulated by a verse in our Parsha. The verse describes a criminal sentence to capital punishment and hang and tells us, Lo salin nivlaso ala eitz, Don't let his body hang overnight. Ki kavor tikvarenu bayomahu. Rather bury him on that same day. Ki kilat elohim taloi. For is the accursed of God hanging there. There are so many interpretations to this last and puzzling phrase, Ki kilat elohim taloi, for is a cursed of God hanging there. Our guide and luminary Rashi explains, using a parable, that this in turn means that it is an affront to God. Zilzulo shel melechu. It is a degradation of the divine king, Sha'adam asoi bidmut, for Adam, humanity, is created in God's image. This notion underscores two important complementary ideas. First, the incredible concept of Tselem Elohim, the powerful notion that the divine image it lives in each and every person, even someone guilty of a capital crime. That this afterglow of the divine image demands dignity and basic respect in death, but all the more so, and certainly, in life, no matter the circumstances and without exceptions, whether in the values of the criminal justice system or in the political arena, for all people, whether we agree with them or not. This formulation, Kikilat Elohim Taloi, for it is a curse of God hanging there, reminds us not to wait until their death to respect them. In the same vein, this interpretation reaffirms an incredible potential and self-worth that each one of us carry as well. And the notion, the responsibility that we have to ourselves and to God to manifest that potential and honor our inherent self-worth. Ki kavor tikberenu bayomahu, the verse tells us, rather bury him on that same day, shares the Talmud, this is the source for the mitzvah, for the command to bury our dead in the ground. Why the ground? Suggests the Midrash in Breshit. Amar lo, God said to Adam Harisho. God said to Adam, Komates Afar, there is a handful of dirt that I have invested in your creation. If you recall, Adam Harishon, first man, was created with a handful of dirt by God. And it's our responsibility over our lifetime to earn that investment. And to recognize that within each one of us is this handful of divine earth, of potential, of skill, of talent, of self-worth. What an appropriate mindset as we approach closer to the Yom Norayim and delve deeper into the spiritual work that is this time on the Jewish calendar. Kikilat Elohim Talui, a reaffirmation of every human being's basic self-dignity and Selim Elohim and divine image and an important reminder of our own inherent self-worth and potential. I'd like to share with you another interpretation that goes off in a very different direction, one of a colleague of mine, Rabbi Stephen X. In the phrase, Kilat Alim Taloi, God, he suggests, is not the subject, but a descriptor of how bad, how severe this accursed situation is. What he envisions, and what I would like to suggest today, is that in the broad sense, what this pasuk is telling us is that one of the most wretched, challenging, difficult fates is being stuck in between, neither alive nor coming to a final resting place after death, literally hanging in limbo, exposed, vulnerable, in an in-between state. Why do I say this now? Because the messaging we have all been receiving during these last several weeks, whether from the shul, from our schools, from our gym, from so many other places, is sign up, make a decision. 
We've been seeing Sign Up for Thy Holidays in person by August 31st. Come to Bingo and Bite. Sign up. Which, by the way, was great. Thank you, Ronit and Racheli. The deadline is coming. Please make a decision. And for some of us, these decisions are straightforward, one way or another. But for others of us, it is a kilat elhim taloi, a moment of agonizing decision, feeling caught between two directions, vulnerable, uncertain, and exposed. Maybe because it's our age, or our health, or other factors, we feel at risk, and we don't know what the right thing is to do. And even for those of us who have decided whether to go and participate in our in-person tefillot or not, each one of us are in our own in-between hanging state. I'm going to go to tefillah or I'm staying home. But I know that this Rosh Hashanah will be nothing like what I'm used to. How do I stand before God, say the tefillot, the prayers, hear the shofar, and make sense of this incredibly challenging, different, strange, painful, and disorienting time, even as our young Israel strives to provide programming, connection, meaning, and familiarity during this time, the sense of being caught in between, the vulnerability, and the uncertainty is so palpable and real. Without a doubt, this year's Yamim Norayim will be a high holidays of Taloi, of hanging in the balance, perhaps now more than ever this year. And what I want to say about this in this message, what I want to say in this moment, is that it is okay. We can and we need to give each other and ourselves permission to hang in the balance, to not exactly know, to feel pulled in two directions. My hope and bracha for all of us is that we find room to process those feelings, whether on our own or in the comfort, security, and safety of our community that we give ourselves and each other permission to be hanging in the balance and to be a listening ear in the days ahead. I'm confident that together, if we're able to do this, we will be able to hang in there together. Thank you for joining us tonight and have an early good Shabbos.